Hey folks, Engineer775 here, uh, and I'm just about to hit 10,000 subscribers, I see, so that's pretty cool. Thank you very much uh, for uh, watching my channel. Thank you for the comments, and again, I know I've got some uh, comments about why I don't reply. I do reply to some. I, um, not being uh, biased or anything, I just can't get to them all, so uh, apologize for that. But anyway, hopefully the content uh, makes up for it. What we're uh, what I'm doing today, I've been out working the shop. It's been a real cold, windy, rainy day, so that's a good motivator for uh, working on heating projects. So, been thinking a lot about uh, heating without um, or with a minimum amount of electricity required. Looking at uh, these radiators, you saw them from a previous video if you watched it, where I got these radiators. A buddy of mine and I went over to an old school. They were throwing away these cast iron radiators, and I was very fortunate got there about 30 minutes before the the salvage guys came so um, today what I did is I came out of the shop and I wanted to put a bypass loop in this isn't a permanent I just wanted to do some testing and uh, let me show you what I did okay um, you've seen my food dryer before which is just a, a dehydrator I've modified this refrigerator old stuff but uh, what I did is I put a little loop in here. I got a that top valve there is just a, a three-way manual zoning valve and another valve here so I can um, basically I run the, the heat through my primary radiator which is this shop heater with the plenum and the water is at 180 degrees right now. I don't know if you can see that on the on the boiler but I'm right at about 180 degrees and uh, so right now I'm bypassing through the old cast iron radiator and which is really cool uh, really hot what I'm going to do here is just kind of show you I'm going to put this heat gun on here and see what kind of temperatures I got alright I'm at 163 degrees 164 I think I hit there depends on where this thing reflects hey I got a 165 a 166 let's see what we got down here 162 obviously heat rises um, all the way along the top of this manifold, we getting any spikes? Eh, 164. That's pretty cool because that is on the return side of this radiator, so it's on the cold side. Again, you saw the water was at 170, 185. So by the time, and nothing's insulated, you're getting it to it. So, and what's really cool? Um, I know a lot of you guys are into EMP stuff. If you can find these old. Um, thermostats you see there the indicators on this side and I can turn this from snowflake uh, which is cold over to five and for hot and what it does is it lets the maximum amount of water flowing through this really cool valve these were both steam valves and hot water this was a takeo valve they're discontinued but you can get newer ones and uh, I picked up oh gosh 20 of these things and so they are they are working really cool. So it does work. I was able to you know test it out and it stops the water flow, restricts the water flow, and actually shuts it right off. And uh, so I'm getting 165 degrees. These you cannot beat this heat. I mean I can't. I'll burn my hand if I hold my hand to this for very long. And so this is just warm. Do you feel how warm that is? Uh, <laughs> hard to beat cast iron and. These radiators are really slick. So, anyway, it's just bypassing. I got two radiators, so I can also plug in my little shop heater here. Again, this is, I know this looks pretty bad, but sometimes you got to experiment, see what works. I'm plugging in my shop, here, and uh, so out of here, out of that hole, there is a 12-inch. About 160 degree air coming out of that that hole. So the two of these put a lot of BTUs in this shop. So I guess that's it. I've got very happy with it. Got all the, the leaks fixed, I hope. And everything is sealed up nicely. I've got you know, five more to work on. A couple of these are, are buddies of mine. So and I got a lot of the fin and tube type radiators that also have these controls so great way to if you can find these um, I've been looking for quite a while and I was fortunate just recently to find them but it's a great 
great way to heat without needing a fan. A better way. More consistent way. And, uh, and so all I really need, and I'm going to do this, is hook up my outside wood boiler with uh, a few batteries and enough solar to keep the batteries charged. And the pump that's pushing the hot water out here this is a simple little cartridge pump and it so it runs around uh, 60 watts continuous so that's all I'd need to produce 24 7 to put out a lot of BTUs now that coil in that plenum is a hundred thousand BTU coil I have no idea what this there's a lot more surface area on this big uh, four foot radiator so I have no idea what how to rate these things so anyhow just a nice cold day. Been nice working on something uh, hot. <laughs> and I guess that's it. So um, I experimented with, uh, debated on whether to hook up to the top. I know with the steam hookups you hook up to the top. But I did actually run the hot water front into the top because these Taco valves are one way. And then I also, on the return, I was able to, with a lot of heat from a torch, remove this bleeder screw. So I did get all the air out of this radiator and ran that until the water was coming out nicely. So I did flush this thing out before hooking it up to my system. And I guess that's that's it. I would love to, what I want to do with this is uh, sandblast it and repaint it. Nice color and put these in the house on the first floor. Strategically located. And when I do that, what I'll do is I'll just drill through the floor over here and come straight up to this valve. And that'll be one, I'll have a bypass loop for every radiator. They make some really cool tees, and I haven't got one yet. They're called scoop tees that actually will help you direct the flow up into the radiator, fills the radiator, and then back out. Uh, so I know some of the newer radiators have a inlet control and an exit control um, but I'm sticking with this old stuff I'm gonna use these up and uh, go with those so alright well I appreciate you watching thanks again for subscribing thanks for all the comments and uh, should be hitting about 10,000 tomorrow maybe on sub subscribers so thank you very much never thought we'd uh, get to this point and uh, really cool so just encourage you folks keep on prepping keep trying stuff again I I try a lot of things. This is just a trial and error, and uh, just been thinking about it, and just plumbed it up today, and it's working beautifully. It looks like, you know what, but it uh, looks like crap, but uh, <laughs> it, it works great. So, got two ways to heat, dry food, and I, I did start on my water heater, um, didn't get too far. I'm going to uh, actually do that. So, just out here in the shop. What I'm working on is uh, another zone, like my house, to uh, dry food, hopefully dry clothes, heat, make hot water, and all off of uh, 60 watts of power. That is my goal. Um, I think I can do it. And I, Yeah, just about. And I can run it all off of battery and probably one 240 watt solar panel. We'll keep this thing going 24-7, so if power goes out, I've got hot water, I've got heat, I've got uh, ways to, well, I don't know about my dryer, but uh, definitely can dry food, make some jerky. Okay, enough rambling, and uh, appreciate you watching. Take care.